my friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen, I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach and I'm on the WW or the Weight Watchers Blue Plan. Happy Monday friends, it is Monday so that means that it is meal prep day. I have three really good recipes for you. Easy, healthy, and wait until you see the dessert. It is Halloween inspired. I'm so excited. If you are here for meal prep, give this video a big, huge thumbs up. If you're new or you haven't yet subscribed, I would love to have you here. Hit the subscribe button and don't forget to click the bell right next to it so you never miss a single video. Make sure you're checking out the description box down below because I just yesterday released my dinner recipe ebook. It contains 50 recipes, all WW plan points included, and calories. It's amazing. I'm shocked at how amazing it turned out. I also have breakfast and lunch, and I will be out shortly with the fourth and final ebook with snacks and dessert. So definitely pick up dinner, pick them all up, have over 60 recipes at the end of the release of the four ebook. You'll find the link to all three books down in the description box, along with nutrition coaching. I offer personalized to you macros and calories, as well as one-on-one -on -one coaching if you'd like to chat with me directly. Links, discounts to everything I shared with you today, as well as all of my other favorite things, and of course my Facebook group, head on over, join us there, we'd love to have you, are also down in that description box. So we have some cooking to do, let's jump in. breakfast this week, we are making copycat homemade McDonald's McGriddle sandwiches. This is one of my favorite things at McDonald's, or used to be, I should say, and we are making a low-calorie, WW-friendly, equally as delicious version. So let me show you what's in our McGriddle recipe. You're going to need some salt and pepper, some Kodiak cakes or some other type of protein pancake mix, syrup of your choice. I'm using Lakanto. This is the only sugar-free syrup that I will have that I will eat because it doesn't have weird ingredients or caramel coloring or loaded with a lot of chemicals. And this is such a good syrup. It tastes like the real thing. Of course, I always have a 15% off discount for Lakanto, so I'll make sure that is linked down below. That is good for the monk fruit sweetener and the syrup, really anything on the Lakanto website. You're going to need some turkey sausage patties. I'm using the Jimmy Dean eggs and then a one point slice of cheese, whatever your preference. This is the one I have on hand, Velveeta, so that is what I'm going to be using. First, we need to make up the pancake batter. So I have one and a half cups of the Kodiak cakes and one cup of water. And then we're just going to stir this together just until mixed. Definitely don't over mix your pancakes. So I have my skillet sprayed with some nonstick cooking spray, warming up to medium heat. Once it is warm, we're going to take a mason jar ring lid, and we're going to use that to form the pancakes. We want them to be the shape and size of the McGriddle. So we're putting the open ring down into the pan, and then we're adding our pancake batter, and we need to make eight mini pancakes total because we're making four breakfast sandwiches. So we wanna divide that batter out evenly. I think I'm going to be able to fit three. Yep, perfect, into my pan. And I'm going to just repeat and allow these to cook until they bubble up, just like you would with traditional pancakes. So I may have overfilled these. You can see we have pancake batter kind of swishing out the side. We'll see what these look like once they're cooked through because we are going to remove the ring and we want it to hold its shape. So I may put a little less of the pancake batter in the next set, but we'll see how these ones turn out. If you have a kitchen syringe or a medical syringe, you can wait until they're cooked all the way through and then inject the syrup into the mini pancakes. I do not have any type of syringe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a well in the middle here as these are starting to cook. You can see they're really starting to firm up. And then I'm just going to add my maple syrup right into the actual pancake. And hopefully the syrup won't burn. If you have a syringe, that's probably a better solution. But since I don't, we're going to make do. I am ready to flip. You can see the ring is starting to come 
off of the pancake. So I actually think I'm going to remove the ring and then flip. Perfect, and you can see that it's that nice McGriddle shape and I'm going to repeat that with the other two. Looks like the syrup is soaked pretty well into the pancakes. Now, I wasn't able to pull this ring off immediately, so when I go to flip it again, once the pancakes are done, I'll pull the ring off then. So whatever works best for you. It's kind of trial and error for me as well. This is my first time trying to make these little McGriddle sandwiches. So here's what I've learned. You have to take the ring off before it cooks all the way through or your McGriddles look like this. Also, I don't even know if these rings are even necessary. I think that because the Kodiak cake batter is pretty thick, that it will hold its rounded shape. So we're gonna try that this next time. This one looks the best, and this is the one that I pulled the ring off initially. So I'm gonna set these aside on a plate. Now we're going to try it without the rings, and we'll see how that works. By me testing all these methods, you guys will have perfect McGriddles griddle sandwiches when you go to recreate this recipe. So there are the McGriddles without the ring. So like I said, I think that's going to work just fine since this is such a thick batter. I am going to do my usual of putting the syrup on as well as it starts to cook down and then we'll flip it and we'll kind of see what happens. But I think that this is the easiest method not having to go with the rings. So that worked perfect. You can see they've held their shape. So no need to use the rings unless you want to. I just think that this is a lot easier and not having to worry about keeping it in the ring. So I'm going to transfer these other three. We have two more to make, so we need eight of the little pancakes total. I do have quite a bit of batter left, so I may even have a little bit of batter left over, but let me spray my pan and pop in the last two. I do have the tiniest of batter left over. I mean, maybe enough for one more, but I don't think so. So I'm just going to stick with the eight and count the points accordingly. I'm going to use my little microwave egg cooker off of Amazon. I'll link this down below for you guys to cook the eggs up for the McGriddles. I just spray it with some nonstick cooking spray, crack in an egg, some salt and pepper, and pop it in the microwave for one minute, and I have perfectly cooked eggs. So we're ready to put together the copycat McGriddles. So we have our little McGriddle buns. I have turkey sausage here. This is pre-cooked, so I'm not going to warm it up or anything. I'm just going to apply it cold because I have to warm these up each morning when I go to eat them any Anyways, if the sausage you're using isn't pre-cooked, make sure you cook it ahead of time so that you're just warming it up in your sandwich the next day. I have four slices of the Velveeta cheese and I have my four eggs. So super, super simple to do. I'm going to take a bottom of my McGriddle. To that, I'm going to put my egg, my sausage, and then a slice of Velveeta right over the top. So when I warm it up, everything melts together really well. Pop on the bun, and you guys, look at this. Homemade, delicious, maple syrupy McGriddles at home. I'm going to wrap this up in some aluminum foil and we'll store them in the refrigerator. So we're just going to simply repeat until we have all four McGriddles. All right, we have our copycat McDonald's McGriddle. Look at how amazing that looks. We have a pancakes, syrup, sausage, cheese, eggs. It's a perfect breakfast. I'm going to pair mine with a little bit of fruit every day. It is seven points on all plans per sandwich. Now that is not bad at all, considering it is a complete breakfast for only seven points. Of course, I will put the calories here on the screen for you. Again, I'm just wrapping mine in some foil once they're cooled. I'm gonna throw them in the refrigerator. You could warm these up in the oven, the microwave, or even your air fryer, but this little goodie right here is going to be my breakfast all week. For my lunch 
this week we are making a super easy yet incredibly delicious lunch with three ingredients. Very, very simple, very, very good. For the ham and cheese pinwheels, you're going to need some light shredded cheese, some ham. I just got mine out of the deli. You want about a quarter of a pound of ham or so. And then you'll want the Pillsbury pizza crust, but make sure you pick up the thin one. It's going to make these pinwheels less points and calories, but that's it for ingredients. Let's start making some lunch. So to get started on our ham and cheese pinwheels, we're going to take a baking sheet, spray it with some non-stick cooking spray. And then we're going to take the pizza crust, open that up, and we're going to roll that out onto the baking sheet. It always scares me to open up the tube. That time it wasn't too bad. So I'm going to kind of unroll it as I go, lay it out here on the baking sheet. Now here's where you can modify the recipe a little bit. You can go ahead and spread your favorite sauce over the crescent roll dough. So some recommendations would be cream cheese, ranch dressing, pesto, or really any sauce that you want. For the ease of the recipe, I'm going to skip adding the sauce to the dough. Now chances are I will dip my pinwheels probably in some ranch dressing, but for the ease of the recipe, I'm going to skip that part and move on to adding my slices of ham. And I'm just going to lay those out over the pizza dough. And then we're sprinkling over one cup of light shredded cheese. Now we're going to roll this up. We want to start at one end and roll. We are going to pinch the ends as we go so that they stick and hold all of the filling in. So you can see as I roll, I'm kind of pinching those ends. So I'll roll and then pinch. It makes six servings, so I'm going to go ahead and cut down the middle. Look at how cute this is. It's so pretty. And then I'm going to cut each one of these into three pinwheels. And then I'm just going to set those onto the baking sheet. For some extra flavor, I'm going to go ahead and just sprinkle just the tiniest bit of garlic salt. This is the Lowry's right over the top of the pinwheels. I think that's going to make it like a garlicky type of ham and cheese. Doesn't that sound good? Kind of like pizza. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be so good. These are going into a 350 degree oven for 13 to 17 minutes or until they're golden brown. These look incredible. I can't wait to see what these look like when they come out of the oven. I just pulled the ham and cheese pinwheels out of the oven. Look at how delicious these look. I mean, cheesy goodness, they're golden brown. This is going to be such an incredible, incredible lunch. I'm going to package these up and I'll be back to share points and calories. So here are the ham and cheese pinwheels. They're all ready to go for the week. Like I said, these look absolutely in Incredible. I'm going to pair this with some fruit. You could put some veggies with it. You could maybe have a side salad, some chips, whatever you would like because each one of these ham and cheese pinwheels using the thin pizza crust are only six points. Six points on all plans is not bad. It is ham. It is cheese. It's pizza goodness. I can't wait to have this all week. Like I said, you could dip this in cream cheese, ranch, pesto. Just make sure you count the points for that. But that is my lunch prep for the week. Sweet treat this week. We are making a Halloween inspired little dessert. We are making candy corn pudding parfaits. How fun does this sound? Wait until you see how low point these are. I'm really excited. So let me show you what's in our recipe. We're going to need some whipped cream. You can use any whipped cream of your choice. Pumpkin pie spice, two packets, two small packets of sugar free vanilla pudding, or one large packet. Food coloring a can of pumpkin puree. Make sure it doesn't have the sweetener so it's not pumpkin pie filling, it's just canned pumpkin. And then I'm gonna top mine with these Yum Earth candy corns. These can be omitted, you don't have to use these. I'm just going to use them kind of as a fun garnishment. So let's jump into our dessert. 
So the first thing we're going to do is make the pudding. And I realized I did not show you that you're going to need some milk, nor do I have any regular milk. So we're going to try it with almond milk. I hope that this works. So in my measuring cup here, I have three cups of the almond milk. And then I'm going to add one more cup, making four cups total. Now we're going to add our two packets of sugar-free vanilla pudding. Using a whisk or a hand mixer, we are going to whisk this together until fully mixed. And let's cross our fingers and toes that almond milk works. All right, I whisked it for about two minutes. Now I'm going to transfer half of the pudding to another bowl so that we can color this for the parfaits. To the large bowl, we're going to add about six tablespoons of pumpkin puree and some pumpkin pie spice. And then go ahead and whisk that together. And you want to do this prior to the pudding starting to thicken. Now, if you want to make your pudding a little bit more orange, which I do, I'm going to add a couple drops of yellow food coloring. And... A couple drops of red food coloring. And then stir that up and that should help deepen that orange color of the pudding. Now the orange is a little more orange. I'm going to put some saran wrap on top of this and pop it into the fridge for it to set. Now for the other bowl of pudding, if you want it to be a little more yellow, we're going to add some yellow food coloring, which I definitely do. So I'm going to add in about four or five drops of the yellow and stir that into the remaining pudding. And you can add as much or as little yellow as you want for the desired candy corn color. So I ended up putting in a couple more drops to get this perfect yellow candy corn color. I'm going to pop some saran wrap on that and put this into the refrigerator as well. One hour later. I'm excited. We're ready to put together the parfaits. So I just grabbed out a mason jar. You can use a bowl, a wine glass, any kind of glass, any kind of device for your parfait. But we're going to make this in the color scheme of a candy corn. So we're going to start with yellow on the bottom, orange in the middle, and then white on top. So our yellow pudding is nice and set. And actually, it's set pretty well using almond milk. So good to know that you can use the almond milk. The entire batch of pudding makes three parfaits. So it's going to make a pretty large parfait. So I went ahead and put one third of the yellow in the bottom. Next layer is orange and this is going to be the thickest layer. I'm doing my best not to get any on the side of the glass so we have that nice perfect candy corn layered look. And I am kind of pushing the pudding around to the sides as I go, just to make sure that it gets nice and layered. And then lastly, we're going to top it with the white layer using the whipped cream. And then just for fun, I'm going to top mine with a single candy corn. So let me show you the completed parfait. All right, and here's our super cute parfait. How fun is that? We have yellow, we have orange, we have white. I think next time I would buy Cool Whip in a tub instead of the spray so it was a little bit more even layered, kind of like the orange and the yellow, but it definitely looks like a candy corn. The cute little candy corn on top is so cute it doesn't add any additional points. So making three parfaits out of the batch, it is going to be four smart points on all plans. That is it, you guys, especially if you use a lower calorie Cool Whip. But this is adorable. It'd be perfect for Halloween. It'd be fun for a little get together. It's a really low point, big dessert. I am loving this. Thank you for joining me on another WW meal prep. I hope you are as excited about the three recipes that I shared with you this week as I am. I can't wait to have these all week. I can't wait to share this fun little Halloween dessert with Troy. This would be great if you have any type of Halloween get together. Super easy, super festive. So definitely check out all three recipes on my website that is linked down in the description box, along with my three recipe eBooks. We have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Definitely pick those up. Links, discounts to all my favorite things. And of course, my Facebook group. Head on over, join us there. We'd love to have you. Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy Monday. Have a fantastic week, and I'll see you all in Wednesday's I eat in a day. Bye.